Hi everybody, this is Deanna Bailey with the Texas Blockchain Council and I'm here with Spencer Randall, Randall my apologies, of Crypto EQ. Hi Spencer. It's a pleasure to be here at the Texas Blockchain Summit. Yeah, um, so tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, I've been in the industry about five years. Uh, Co-founder and principal at Crypto EQ. We really think of ourselves as the morning star of crypto. We do due diligence and research on this, this great asset class of Bitcoin and things like it. Um, and we also provide market research and, and market insights for people to you know, either take their first steps and, and find that North Star and that, that guide to help them along their crypto journey or even more intermediate and expert level that are looking on deep dive uh, research into different crypto assets. Why do you think that's important? Like for people who want to learn, why in your heart do you feel like you need to be the resource that they turn to to educate? I think one of the reasons, we've gotten this question before, it, one of the reasons what we're doing is so important and education is so important is because Bitcoin is not just a way to make money, it's not just an investment. It, it provides an opportunity for everyone around the world to be their own bank. And I use Bitcoin, there are other assets that are interesting, but Bitcoin is, is the biggest and the first. Uh, so, you know, billions of people around the world can be their own bank with Bitcoin and things like it. And it's so important to educate people on that part of it because this isn't just something you allocate to. It's some, it allows you to take custody of that value in that asset, in, right. in the, like a digital real estate in a sense, right? It's, it's a digital store of value, it's a digital gold, and you can custody it yourself. That's what makes it so different, yeah. and that's why education is so important. Tell us how you got into something like that. Yeah, I'd say my first steps, uh, I really looked at uh, the opportunity in early 2017 as an investor, wanting to allocate to something that uh, was higher risk. Uh, I had a very conservative portfolio at the time. I started with Bitcoin, and then I started to learn about Ethereum, and I started to look at a lot of the different altcoins and different use cases and opportunities yeah. within the asset class. Yeah, so that, a lot of them. That, was my, that was my first step. And I've seen thousands of uh, digital assets come and go. Uh, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum have been uh, my strongest interest over the years. Uh, but I, I do think there's a, a number of things that are coming online that are deserving of our team's attention and, and research. So having been in crypto for about five years, um, Tell me about some of the things you've seen change, or I mean, even when it comes to this conference, like what what are you noticing about the landscape that just yeah. keeps moving there's, over the years? Well, there's a lot of history around blockchain and, and Bitcoin in Austin, Texas specifically. Uh, there's been some great events in this building. Um, the Texas Bitcoin Conference years ago was hosted here. Uh, this is, of course, Texas Blockchain Council's first big conference here. And, I've also seen uh, the Texas Blockchain Group through the University of Texas, that student-run group, put on events in, in this uh, conference center. So I'd say over time I've seen uh, the audience, the demographics mature. Uh, this is a very refined, polished event. A lot of great people coming out. We've had senators speak you know, this morning. So to see folks like that come out and engage uh, the Bitcoin community, the blockchain community, speaks to the maturity of the asset class. You know, it's arrived. People want to learn about it. Um, we need to learn how to, to navigate regulating it. Yes. We're, we are all craving clarity there. Uh, so I'd say, in a word, it's maturing. Right, I, and I would agree with you. In, in that aspect, when we're talking about the regulatory framework, where do you see the Texas Blockchain Council really fitting into like the importance of articulating that to, to government? And it, I, it's education. You know, similar to Crypto EQ, you know, we want to educate everyone around the world on this asset class to provide due diligence and make it easy to learn about and, and demystify this complicated thing. And specifically when I think about Texas Blockchain Council, I see them as a liaison between uh, our regulators that, that we want to learn uh, and someone that can help be that bridge uh, for folks in Texas and beyond in, in Washington, D.C. to learn about what this is and really understand what, what some of the weight of some of their decisions um, and, and cut through the myths around blockchain. Yeah, I mean, you, you running um, a blockchain education program, I would think that that would be super important to be able to articulate to people who want to get involved, right? So like, how do you approach somebody who wants to jump into Bitcoin, but there's no regulatory framework to tell them what they're supposed to do or how they report the tax? I mean, that could yeah. be a very tough thing to overcome. Yeah. Well, the way I started was reading and discussion. So I, I founded a community uh, that originally gave birth to Crypto EQ. So you're know, going to community events like this uh, and discussing 
with folks. You may not always agree. You know, I've had some debates already today uh, of folks that are, are Bitcoin maximalists, and, and we're an altcoin research company. We're not maximalists, but we certainly see the value and can agree on the value of Bitcoin. For sure. It's everything else where there's a lot of discuss, a lot of discussion and yeah. good discourse. Uh, but you know, I see I see uh, Texas Blockchain Council is a great liaison to help people learn. Uh, you know, feedback. We've we've met customers today that they're already subscribed to CryptoQ. They want to you know meet the team and, and let you know, humanize all this this research they've been reading. The feedback that we're getting is that uh, we're helping demystify a complex technology. So you can think of what we do as a filter on top of really technical research like reading white papers or engaging development communities. So you see not everybody has that skill set or ability. So we, we, we distill things down and, and filter it so that we can relate to the, the average person that may not be a developer. Right. Maybe, maybe they have some other occupation and they just don't have the time to understand that, that technical aspect of this, this asset class. Yeah, it, I mean, it can be a little difficult to digest if you're new to it, you know, so I, I understand that and empathize with it completely. Having having been in Texas and in crypto for so long, how do you feel about Texas becoming the front runner for, for blockchain and crypto? I love it. I, yeah. mean, I, I Born and raised about uh, you know, four hours away in Galveston, Texas. I live in Houston, Texas now. I've lived there for a decade. Nice. So, you know, deep Texas roots in my family and, and our team, and a lot of our team is on shore in, here in Texas. So it's, it's just great to see uh, Texas align with the blockchain movement and the Bitcoin movement. Yeah, I think it's pretty incredible that, uh, what was it, just maybe a month or so ago that they passed the bill that Texas charter banks can custody crypto now. And I mean, that's, yeah. that's a big deal. That's a front runner in the US where other states are just shying away or not really knowing how to approach it, whereas Texas is just embracing it full on. Yeah. Several years ago, you know, Wyoming was the the big uh, you know, open yep. space that where you, where you saw a lot of crypto companies flocking to, and over time, I, I'd love to see big. Uh, I'd love to see Texas uh, rise as, as an opportunity for companies to come uh, you know, innovate. Yeah, do you think we're headed that way with mining already? I mean, it feels Absolutely. like there's a lot of mining talk there's, here. There's a new group that's spun up in Houston uh, called the Houston Bitcoin Meetup, and it's uh, it's hosted through Meetup.com, and, and some of the supporters here today helped back that organization. And it's, it's incredible, you walk in a room, it's, it's not that different than this in terms of the demographics. Sure. If you've got a lot of oil and gas companies coming out to these events now, really polished crowds, really refined folks, but businesses coming out to learn about Bitcoin and, and figure out how to bring uh, you know, Bitcoin mining operations to some of their stranded energy or some of their energy assets that aren't being put to work. Yeah. Yeah, I, get, I actually went to the the one um, a couple weeks or a month or so ago, and it, it was great because in the publications it was like gas and oil guys go to a secret meetup, and we're like, it really wasn't that secret. It wasn't but. secret at all. It's on <laughs> meetup.com. It's a publicly hosted forum, and That's the, right. so you know it, it feels like that uh, just some of that baggage from you know previous cycles. You know, there's this underground Bitcoin yeah. stuff. Uh, some of that negative momentum still kind of following on. Yeah. But uh, we know that that's, that's not what it is. It's a very open community. You can come out and learn. Yeah, very much. Uh, things are changing. And I think that with time, that negative momentum will just erode and people will start to see Bitcoin and, and the asset class for what it really is. Yeah. I feel like that negative energy comes from like fear and not understanding it, right? I so think like, it's a natural, it's just, I think that's a natural reaction to something that's new and intimidating and, and holds a lot of weight. There's a lot of gravity around Bitcoin. Uh, you know, I think that's a natural reaction. It, you know, the more you can digest it and learn about it, uh, the more I think that people will see value in this. Yeah, I agree. All right, Spencer, is there anything you want to leave our audience with? Yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure to be here. And if you'd like to learn more about CryptoEQ, you can visit us at CryptoEQ.io or at CryptoEQ on virtually any social media platform. Awesome. Well, thank you, Spencer, for taking the time. I appreciate it. Appreciate it as well.